I have some recordings that I need to share with my viewers. Today is September the 19th, 2019. There's really not going to be a whole lot to see on neither one of these videos that I'm going to put out because it's more audio than it is video. <clears throat> Three days from now, we'll be going over into the fall festivities. The bottom line is that I had a group of people that was trying to destroy my life. And it wasn't just one. It wasn't just two. But it was several, several people that indirectly wanted to bury me and put me away. One of those individuals was the very individual that I was leaving this message with, Lieutenant Barnes out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I wanted my viewers to hear this because I had posted it one time on my Facebook page, but since then I have shut down my Facebook page and now I'm going on another avenue pertaining to YouTube of putting out my message. Once more, I never threatened Lieutenant Burns. But because that I had touched off on national security issues, whenever a warrant went out for my arrest, even though it was nothing more than a state warrant, they treated it like it was a federal warrant to the degree that they basically destroyed my life or was in the process of destroying my life even the very year of 2009 whenever this event took place while I was working in Kennesaw, Georgia working for a body shop group by the name of Gerber Collision and Glass which is stationed out of Chicago, Illinois that has about 40 shops up in Canada and give or take about 150 shops here in the United States, or they did have, I don't know, those figures may have changed. Um, the owner of the business flew from Chicago down to Kennesaw, Georgia, purposely just to tell me that I no longer had any type of employment working for that business. Since then, I have developed somewhat of a relationship with Lieutenant Barnes and he has apologized for doing what did he done but the damage had still been done to my reputation I want you just to listen to this uh, sequence of this and let you let you be of your own judge of whether or not you feel like that I threatened this particular officer in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The very officer that wound up planting a bomb in the back end of my truck that was activated to the point of blowing both the windows out of my camper and basically desecrating my camper for no reason. They claimed it was because I had a sleeping bag in the back end of my truck and it looked like TNT and because I couldn't answer their questions promptly, they went ahead and pursued me like I was some sort of uh, known terrorist that I was going to re-blow up the Mario, old Mario building site that has now turned into a memorial site out in downtown Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So I want you to listen to this please and be of your own judges towards whether or not you feel like that I should have even had a state warrant placed on my life that Homeland Security initiated it like it was a federal warrant. Please, if you don't mind, please listen. Number of 405 297 
1.51. So I just received a letter saying, stating the fact that they had denied uh, liability for blowing up the back end of my camera shell. I would like a reasonable explanation, the reason why that I was denied uh, the city of Oklahoma not being liable for blowing up my camper shell. I explained to you, sir, on five different occasions that there was nothing in my automobile that was harmful to myself or harmful to society. I signed an affidavit giving you people authority to search my truck. You are the people that created paranoia. You are the people that brought a robot in. You are the people that blocked the back end of my damn camper shell up. If I have to, sir, I will go back down to Oklahoma, Oklahoma and I will set up protest groups, and we will turn this upside down in the eyes of the media, sir. Other than that, you have a good day. Oh, 
I've got telephone numbers. I've got contacts. We can put, post up on Google. We can post up on the internet pertaining to what you people are doing. What you people have done was wrong. And you need to give an account for it. Hell, it wouldn't be no different if a snow truck go by and, and uh, 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 ate somebody the whole side of somebody's automobile up. The city needs to be responsible for their mistakes. And you're not being you're not you're not being held accountable. You're you're uh you're just uh, passing it off like, oh, well, he'll go away. No, sir, I'm not going away. I help on the ministry. In Jesus Christ, you believe when he'll ministry his name. I plan on uh, having a wide world nationwide ministry, sir. I'm not just going to up and go away. I haven't left and went away since 1988 whenever I sent nine takes to the white. To replay. Message from phone number six one five four nine five nine four seven three received yesterday at two thirty four p.m. This is Dennis James Shubie Jackson again. Social four twelve point three zero seven nine four three twenty two sixty one. Location Cook County, Illinois, downtown Chicago. St. Teresa's Hospital, mother's maiden name, Jordan. The reason why that I dropped down into Texas was A, yes, looking for job situations, with me being an auto body technician, but I was also in the process of an investigation. I just got to recently, about two weeks before that, having 15 guns pulled on me up in Boone County, Kentucky. You can contact the governor of the state of Kentucky, Governor Brashears, to verify this. It seems like the new people was on a witch hunt. A demonic witch hunt, which the system is demonic, and he was trying to hunt me down because I was investigating the whole primary purpose of reason why that, that Timothy McVeigh deal never took place to begin with, which was a a uh, forerunner of what happened down in Waco, Texas, which was a forerunner of what happened in 1988 as far as the falling of the Berlin Wall. This was all part of an investigation, sir. Now, you can complicate things all you want, but you people was in the wrong by you provoking me in that area, and the next thing you know, you're sitting out there making a deal with uh, shit in and close down uh, half of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, bringing in all the cameras and uh, doing all that stuff, and you people going to impose upon the power all I've done was go down there and, 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 and to share my grievance this pertaining to what happened. And within 30 minutes, I was being caught up in the back of a police squad car because of the security down there. They're so stinking paranoid. Just ask yourself the question, why would anybody want to blow up service that's not already gone? That was stupid to begin with. I mean, if I was stupid around over there at the new federal building, that may be a different issue over there. I'll tell you, you people are paranoid, in which I sympathize with you. I really do, because what happened was a tragedy. It really was. And I wouldn't wish nothing like that upon anybody in any given situation. But to take it out on an innocent bystanders such as myself, with me trying to relocate up into that area, I don't think that that's fair at all, sir. I don't think that that's fair at all. And as far as what you've done by running me out of town, after I've been working down there in, in uh, Sand Springs for about three weeks up there in Tulsa, by you having your officers uh, escort me out of town, that was another violation. We'll make that public as well. And I'm sure you'll probably sit back and you'll deny and you'll lie about that as, as well, won't you? As well as the rest of your officers. Sit back, you giggle, you laugh, you snigger. And you act like, well, we fucked that old boy, didn't we? No, what you've done, you have brought 
uh, wrath upon to your own heads pertaining to God. Vengeance is the Lord's. And God can go in there and he can wrap AIDS on you. He can destroy your city with tornadoes, hurricanes, or whatever. He can bring clouds. Uh, there's all kinds of devastation that God can bring up into your, up into your state because of the illegitimacy that he just recently went on pertaining to, to Denny Shane Shuby Jackson. You better stop and evaluate what you've done, why you've done it, and you better be held accountable for what you've done, sir. Once more, I did not tell you that I... To replay, press... Just got through listening to that and hopefully your opinion is like mine I never did threaten Lieutenant Barnes's life towards going to do any type of harm in any way to that particular officer but like I said because the Oklahoma authorities put it out there and the way that they put it out there it brought national scrutiny from other law enforcement agencies all over America towards breathing hot fire and brimstone down my neck no matter if I was in Kentucky no matter if I was in Phoenix Arizona no matter if I was out in California no matter if I was out in parts of Atlanta Georgia or down in Florida they basically ruined my life as far as me being able to get out here and get a good decent job now we're gonna play this other DVD once more that one that you just got through listening to was uncut that was the actual DVD this is a this is a uh, court proceedings in 
Paducah, Kentucky, by federal judges. Long about June, the last part of June, the first part of July. After that, I got studied and evaluated up in MCC in downtown Chicago. Because of all the attention that had been brought to my life, simply because I was out in Waco and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, reinvestigating the investigators. I even went as far as going up to Los Alamos, New Mexico, and found one of the bomb specialists that was out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in 1995 that was one of the first ones on the scene that told me point blank that used to work for the United States military out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Dennis, we told him there was no way that 3,000 pounds of ammonia nitrate done this kind of damage. We told him that not only did we think that there was a bomb over here, but we told them that we thought that there was a bomb over here. And not only did we tell them that, but we told them it was a possibility that there was a third bomb over here because it was entirely too much damage for a rider truck with 3,000 pounds of ammonia nitrate to do that kind of damage. Today, today, once more, if you look up the noble eye, you will see a part of the truth that was told in regard to there being found detonators in the lower part of the basement that actually defaced and desecrated that building into smithereens that killed so many innocent people that day simply because somebody had brought in some explosions that was supposed to have been used on the Davidians that after about the 35th the 40th day the ordeal that happened down in Texas went from being a rescue mission to a doomsday mission and really and truly no one was supposed to have walked away alive in that scenario that happened in Waco in 1993. You know, if all the witnesses is dead, you don't have no testimony. If you don't have no testimony, you can make up your own testimony towards saying whatever that you want to say about what occurred. I investigated both events, and because of it, I was dehumanized, I was demonized, and I was treated as a traitor to my own country simply because of me discovering the truth and bringing it out to the American people. I was treated worse than a red-haired stepchild, as the old saying goes, of me trying to do my patriotic Good Samaritan duties or deeds that I felt like all Americans should be performing upon this type of hypocrisy. Please listen to the court proceedings up in Paducah, Kentucky in 20 and 10, long about the latter part of June, first part of July, after that I got studied by a Dr. Dana up in downtown Chicago in MCC. Please listen. United States of America versus Dennis J. Jackson. Uh, violation notice F is in Fox Trot 404 Mr. Jackson, present person. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. Along with his attorney, on the stop on David Sparks, is present on behalf of the United States. Uh, this is a doctor, I mean, a attorney that was designated to me by the name of Wildersburg out of Lexington, Kentucky, that's speaking in my behalf. We are, Mr. Jackson is back uh, 
you don't, you don't have to say be safe. Uh, Mr. Jackson is uh, back uh, after having received a psychological exam at the Metropolitan Correction Center. Uh, Psychology Services Department in uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, in deference to Mr. Jackson, I want to get this matter resolved as did counsel for both parties as quickly as possible. And if there's no interference, we're going to, or no, uh, no objection, we're going to go ahead and take care of this today, even though the original is the file copy is not yes, there. Yes, sir. I want the parties to know that I called uh, Dr. Dana chief psychologist at the department uh, and he said that the as far as he knows the original report has not gone out yet it has not gotten the signature of the warden up there I believe uh, and I told him that we need the original hard copy that is to be FedEx down to Paducah as soon as it's signed by all the parties it is that uh, fileable copy that we would need uh, to finally perfect this whole situation. But in deference to Mr. Jackson, uh, I'm going to, if there's no objection, take care of this today while we have fax copies of the report. A fax copy of the report will be available to Mr. Jackson and to the attorneys for both parties. Now, it's my understanding that Mr. Jackson is presently uh, charged under 18 U.S. Code Section 111A, uh, which is a Class A misdemeanor, which is intimidating or interfering with with a federal officer. I think what we are going to do, I think after having talked to counsel, is it not, is he will enter a plea of guilty to 36 CFR 261.3, which is also threatening, intimidating, or interfering with a force officer engaged in his official duties. Um, class B misdemeanor punishable by a time not to exceed $5,000 imprisonment of not more than six months or both. Uh, and it's my understanding that, that the United States is going to recommend, or parties have agreed, that Mr. Jackson would be released on, uh, uh, would be placed on unsupervised probation for a period of two years. No fine would be imposed. Uh, there would be a $10 special assessment that must be imposed by the court that is mandatory. And there is also a $25 processing fee for a total of $35. And, um, and, and I will hear the party's uh, recitation on what conditions of probation are expected to impose. Is that where we are today? It is, Your Honor. Uh, I think the record needs to... Uh... I want to stop right there for a second to clarify to my viewers. <clears throat> First of all, the original... the original... target was to charge me for premeditated murder simply because I had left a message on a recorder up in Land Between the Lakes in Kentucky to a Mr. Dwayne Camry that I had met in a darkly complected Arabic descent human being him and his 12 disciples over in Martin, Tennessee on three different occasions and that I felt like that God had selected me to go to war with this particular individual towards trying everything within my power to rid evil from its axis. In other words, cutting the snake off at its head. Going after the main perpetrator that masterminded 9-11 over in Saudi Arabia. They approached me in my cell. Mr. Jackson, you can't do that. You cannot premeditate towards going to harm or hurt anybody. That is a class E felony. They go, if you'll do this, if you'll go and agree to get a study done, we will drop this charge and initiate this other charge pertaining to supposedly intimidating or infuriating a federal forest service 
officer. The reason why that this Federal Forest Service officer by the name of Dwayne Cameron, badge number 1414, was infuriated was because I told him and his department that if they come back up there to the site, the sacred site, which is off of Legal Road 142, up by Sugar Bay, that God would strike them down dead before they ever got up to the altar. They took that as a literal threat. And because of it, I had to go through what I went through. The thing about it is, I was always under the influence growing up as a child that America was a good country. America stood for a good righteous cause. America was founded upon a holy righteous God. And I was under the influence that we as a society was su supposed to all be going up against the axes of evil pertaining to lying and cheating and raping and stealing and anything to do with breaking the Ten Commandments. That's what I was under the influence of. This court proceedings proves two things. It authenticates two things. First of all, America has been flipped upside down. Because rather than them punishing me for me being involved in, in my endeavors, they should actually be in, in, enforcing. They should be supporting what I'm involved in doing towards wanting to rid evil from its axis. And the second thing it does, it verifies that there is a Satan that is now walking around in a human form because why would have they have went through such extremes towards wanting to protect him? We're not supposed to be protecting the evildoers. We're supposed to be putting them away. Just like the Bible talks about. Talk about twisted. You ain't going to get much any twisted -er than this other than what I occur, uh, encountered out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, after me going out there and discovering the truth that there was a major government cover-up. Let's listen on. Accurately reflect exactly what has come about here. Mr. Jackson, either he nor I have ever taken the position that he was incompetent, uh, but let alone insane, either at the time of the offense or presently. Uh, the reason he... But what they was hoping... But what they was hoping is that I would have went in front of a bunch of doctors and I would have started telling them all this spooky stuff about angels and about my life being spared and about this Antichrist and the false prophet and Satan that the Bible predicts. What they was hoping is that I would have been loose-lipped to the point that I would have basically buried myself. In other words between a doctor and a judge, rather than being evaluated, they would have submitted me or committed me into a treatment center, probably in Springfield, Missouri, and that's where I would have remained for probably two, three, possibly five years or longer while they were steadily feeling me full of Thorazine and all other kinds of psycho uh, uh, Enosis uh, medication to the point that if I wasn't crazy whenever I went in, I would have been crazy before I ever got out uh, towards stumbling around doing the Thorazine shuffle and bumping into the walls. I know the tactics that this government uses towards people like me. And because I didn't have a following, because I didn't have a support team, because I wasn't a Joe Olstein towards having a 26,000 membership standing in behind me, it left me vulnerable. And you ask, how come you're so ill to certain people around here? Because they have thrown me under the bus. They have thrown me to the wolves. None of them supported me. And they left me out there to the point that 
I was basically a punching bag. And yes, this includes the prosecuting attorney. This includes Tommy Moore, the judge here in Weekly County. This includes Tommy Thomas, and this includes various people that was a part of this conspiracy that began all the way back into 1983 and in 1988 in my life. And you wonder how come that I keep warning you and telling you that if you continue on this path that you're on, that God's going to get you, that God's going to get you. If other societies throughout the history of mankind did not get away with all this garbage. Why should you even begin to conceive or think that this society in the 21st century is going to get away with it? Because I guarantee you, God is not going to apologize such as Billy Graham suggested back in the mid-90s that if God didn't hurry up and come back and judge America, that he was going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah and for other cultures that he destroyed because of the same type of atrocities that was committed upon to each other. God's not going to apologize. And I'm not going to apologize for God. Now, if I've done something that I've done wrong or if I made a mistake on, I'll apologize to you. A good man can make a mistake, but it takes a better one to admit it. But I have never gotten an apology from the Oklahoma authorities. I got one from an Oklahoma lieutenant that was personally involved in my life. But as far as me getting an apology from the governor of the state of Oklahoma, uh, as far as me getting an apology from the governor of the state of Kentucky uh, as far as me getting an apology from the state of Georgia pertaining to how that they throwed me through the ringer over there while I was living in Duluth working for a body shop called Classic Collision uh, there's your three strikes as far as me getting an apology from the governor of the state of Tennessee pertaining to how that they banded me from the state of Tennessee simply because I was out there doing a good deed? Uh, now we got four strikes. What was the Bush's memento? Three strikes and you're out? We sent for evaluation is that the United States had reason to question whether or not he was confident. And uh, an agreement was reached that uh, in exchange for the United States not seeking a felony indictment against this individual, which would have led to the possibility of substantial penitentiary sentence, that if he would agree to be uh, evaluated, that we would have a resolution we're talking about here today. Uh, Mr. Jackson and I talked about that. Mr. Jackson agreed. Uh, he fulfilled his part of the bargain. He went off. He got evaluated. That evaluation has come back, and it does, in fact, confirm that Mr. Jackson is not insane. Uh, he, is, he, he is competent, both at the time of the alleged offense and now. Uh, we agree to the amendment down. Uh, Mr. Jackson has agreed to enter a plea of guilty. Uh, I have explained to him uh, that this is what we call a, a general intent crime. Uh, it is his position that he never intended harm to anyone, uh, that he never intended to uh, intimidate anyone. On the other hand, we understand that intimidation is in the eye of the recipient and uh, that individuals at LBL may very well have felt intimidated or threatened by his actions. But it's important for Mr. For Mr. Jackson to know that he never intended to harm anybody at any time. I'm right about that, Dennis. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, but we do agree for, to resolve this matter. Uh, he does enter a plea of guilty to the amended charge under the CFR. Um, we do agree to a the period of probation. Mr. Jackson would prefer a uh, lesser period of probation, but of course that's up to the court. All right. Uh, one thing I want to mention, Mr. Jackson, I read this report Friday. I got it in my facts Friday. And I was particularly impressed with uh, Dr. Dana's um, 
interpretation of, of your study at the Correctional Center. Apparently, Mr. Jackson was completely cooperative yes, sir. with the staff, uh, with the other, and I hate to use the term inmates, but I think that's the term of art up there, and that uh, he was perfectly forthcoming in his, uh, in his interviews with the staff up there. And uh, Mr. Jackson, I, I don't know that you need to be congratulated on it, but uh, I want to give you credit for credit to you that uh, you apparently were an exemplary inmate uh, at the correction center, uh, at, at the uh, psychological center for whatever that is worth. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to make some findings before we go into taking the plea itself. I'm referring to page 12 of the of the report that has come in and the findings of Dr. Dana and the staff up there. It says, at the present time, Mr. Jackson does not appear to be experiencing any acute symptoms of either of these illnesses. Uh, and that is uh, the illnesses of, uh, the bipolar or schizoaffective disorder. Uh, further, additionally, his ability to understand the legal proceedings and to properly assist his counsel do not appear to be noticeably impaired. It is therefore concluded that Mr. Jackson is appropriate for continuation of legal proceedings at this time. Uh, in other words, I conclude that you would be confident at this time to give us a, a plea, in this case, that can resolve the matter in full. We have to be sure that you're confident to give a voluntary and intelligent plea. Then if you will go to page three, which is page 16 of the packet that I've given you, the last, very last page, I believe the last two sentences that says that the totality of the information available regarding the alleged defense suggests that the defendant was capable of appreciating the nature, quality, and wrongfulness of his actions. Furthermore, there is insufficient evidence from which to conclude that he was suffering from a severe mental disease or defect at the time of the offense in question. So, uh, based upon those two statements and the psychological report as a whole, uh, the court concludes that Mr. Jackson is uh, confident to proceed this time. Mr. Minister. Your Honor, I'd also like to supplement the record on, on the final page of the report uh, in which uh, the doctor agreed with the position we have consistently taken throughout this entire case. Oh, he said, no. And I quote, uh, uh, he simply did not interpret his actions to be threatening but instead justified given the importance of his message and the failure of others to heed his warnings. When confronted with the inappropriateness of his approach, he readily agreed that his actions could be misinterpreted by others. Yes. I believe that this establishes a factual basis uh, for the plea, but it also, I think, indicates the position we have consistently taken in this manner. And of course, the proof's in the pudding. Uh, for the months that he was at MCC Chicago, uh, he behaved in an exemplary fashion. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, you are presently circa charged with a Class A misdemeanor and with the agreement of counsel, it's going to be amended down to 36 CFR 261.3 and uh, the title of the section is Interfering with a Force Officer, Volunteer, or Human resource program is really even giving false report to a force officer. In pertinent part, uh, pursuant to our proceedings today, uh, I am going to use... Could you, could you repeat the, uh, the offense? He did hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, CFR 261.3. Uh, the title of the section is Interfering with a Force Officer, Volunteer, or Human Resource Program Enrollee are giving false report to a force officer. That's the entire section. As is pertinent to our proceedings here today. Uh, well, let, let me say that subsection A says threatening, resisting, intimidating, or interfering with a force officer engaged in or on account of the performance of his official duties in the protect, protection, improvement, or administration of the national force system is prohibited. I think the only uh, verb we need it is interfering. Is interfering? Yes, sir. Force officer. Yes, sir. Uh, do we agree with that, Mr. Sparks? Let me say this before I respond. Uh, I'm appearing. Uh, I mean, the initial lawyer in the case uh, was an assistant. 
who is transferred out. So with respect to the initial charge uh, and the amendment, uh, I have I have no information contrary to what has been recited here in court. And I appear today uh, for uh, Randy Ream, who's the primary lawyer who's entered his appearance, has had communications with the court and defense counsel. Uh, with all that said, I wanted to describe my appearance and, and background information. Uh, and the short answer is uh, what you had recited is sufficient for this charge, Your Honor. Is, uh, you're not pretty guilty to that. You're not pretty guilty to that at all. You haven't falsified anything. Like, would, would the United States agree that the proper verb would be interfering with as opposed, as opposed to intimidating a force officer, service officer? That's correct, Your Honor. Which one? Interfering? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I think that's our understanding. It is. Yes. yes. Now, Mr. Jackson, um, I, I wanted I want to stop real quick. Once more, they twisted it. It wasn't I interfering with them. It was them interfering with me. They kept coming at me saying, why are you challenging the system? Why are you challenging the system? And my reply to them was, <coughs> it's not me challenging the system it's the system challenging me the system that I'm familiar with was set up in eradicating evildoers regardless whether it was rapers robbers liars people out here stealing people out here breaking the commandments of God that's what our laws was based around that's what the churches are supposed to be based around is eradicating the axes of evil not supporting them not enhancing them closure to disclose the the statute or the regulation that we're talking about today you're not charged with everything that this regulation encompasses we're going to narrow it down to interfering with a forest officer engaged in or account of his official duties. That's it. Uh, if you plead guilty and acknowledge that you interfered with a force officer in the performance of his or her official duties, then uh, you will be guilty of a Class B misdemeanor under the 36 CFR 261.3. And it's anticipated after having talked to counsel the punishment to be imposed, as I said before, is that there will be no imprisonment, there will be no fine. I will have to impose a mandatory court cost of $35. I can't get away from that one way that I could. i got to stop it right there. There will be no imprisonment. But yet, no, I was incarcerated for five and a half months going through all these different chains of events. Whenever you get something like this done it's not a cut and dry thing it takes a while for the paperwork to go through the system then the system randomly picks where you're gonna go because I could have just as easily went out to Wyoming or Texas or up into New York City or anywhere else for this evaluation but just so happens I wound up in MCC in downtown Chicago in the process, you got to be transferred from this jail facility to that jail facility. You got to get on this bus and go from another jail facility. Then you got to get on an airplane. Then the airplane takes you all the way to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, because that's where the hub is towards where they dispert everybody. In other words, I didn't even have a clue that I was even going to Chicago, Illinois, until after I got to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, in the process of being transferred, and that's whenever I found out, within five minutes of fixing to walk onto another airplane, that, hey, you're fixing to go to Chicago. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 
this has costed not just various monetary entities money as far as the state of Kentucky or the state of uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, up in Raleigh, North Carolina. And of course, what they done the second time up in Kentucky was sure enough a dirty deal because rather than handle it the third evaluation, major evaluation that I had done, they handled it the third time through the state and took me to LaGrange, Kentucky, in which that don't have nothing at all on this particular DVD right here. But I'm just telling you, it wasn't good enough for the people in the land between the lakes to send me through two evaluations because the first one was at Four Rivers Behavior Center in 208 whenever they shut down the Kentucky Dam. Now we're here in January. They rearrest me after I return back to LBL within a matter of 10 minutes after I purchase a off-season camping permit. Arrest me. Keep my truck impounded that my son had to drive from Memphis to go get my truck and bring it back to Memphis, Tennessee. The 2005 Toyota uh, Tundra. It was in the dead winter. Once more, being evaluated by a doctor up in MCC downtown Chicago. And the judge has already done said that I've done a spectacular job as far as being a good candidate. Well, I knowed what they was up to. And I knowed, even to this day, what they would still like to do because by me coming back to Tennessee and all this hellabaloo erupting in my life helps to verify that these people ain't of God. These court systems are not of God. These court systems are of the devil. That's one reason why that they throw the Bible completely out of most of the court systems to the point that they don't even recognize the Bible in the court systems. They don't want the Ten Commandments in any of their court systems. And to be physically, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually attacked the way that David and I was attacked here, simply because of me coming back to my own home, my own estate, verifies what kind of people are up in not only Dresden, but up in Kentucky, and out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, as well as the people out in Atlanta, Georgia. These people are not working for godly people. They're working for the ungodly people. Whenever they pass laws, they're not passing laws for the weak. They're not passing laws for the poor. They're not passing laws for the depleted. Passing laws for themselves. They're passing laws to benefit themselves. And the people still has not woken up to this type of hypocrisy. Please, let's listen to some more here of this court proceedings up in Paducah, Kentucky, long about the latter part of June, the first part of July, in 2010. Please listen. I want a two-year period of probation with conditions of probation. First of all, I will say I know at this time that I'm going to give counsel an opportunity to recite what conditions of probation uh, they would request to impose. But the probation will be unsupervised. You'll be allowed to leave Western Kentucky. I understand you want to go back to Texas. Is that right? Oh, Sir. Tennessee initially. Sir? Yes, sir. Can I stand? Yes. Sir, I've been so, I have been so, uh, my feelings have been so harmed and hurt over all this. And I realize I may have brought some of this upon myself to the extent that I would like to bear record, on record, of the fact that I am contemplating leaving the United States. 
I just want to make sure that whatever whatever recommendations that you give today will not impose my rights with me doing that. So it will not. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Jackson, let me say this. I don't even think that that's possible due to the fact that Homeland Security still has me deemed as being a threat. And as soon as I wind up going to an international airport, it wouldn't matter if it was in Nashville, Memphis, or Atlanta, or wherever. I guarantee you I would have U.S. Marshals that would probably throw guns on me. And they would stop me leaving the continental United States. In other words, they got me landlocked. They got me where they think they want me. But I guarantee you what that they have done, they have set up a trap for themselves pertaining to all this retribution that keeps either falling from the sky or falling in the form of illegitimacies going on with our White House, our diseases, our wars, our famines, our earthquakes, our volcanoes, our hurricanes, they have entrapped themselves. They took the bait, hook, line, and sinker, simply because of some idiot that thought that they was going to be able to undermine God and God's people here in the USA. It's the very same thing that happened with the Pharaohs and Moses. Moses thought that this guy is really wigged out because Pharaoh thought that he was a god and he thought that he could overpower God. You don't get no crazier than that. Well, that's exactly what's occurred here in the USA. And that's the reason why the calamity started out down in Waco in 1991. The calamity hit, uh, I mean in 1993, the calamity hit again in 1995 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And if you look at the pattern, everything has went to hell in a handbasket since 1988. Up until 1988, the USA was holding its own. Look at the records. The proof is in the pudding. Just like Mr. Wildesworth said, the proof is in the pudding, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Having read the report from your state up in Chicago, I am totally convinced of the sincerity of your feelings. Thank you, sir. Okay? I am totally convinced of the sincerity of your feelings. Doctors are, and, and they have communicated that to us through this report. Once more, we're playing off on a double standard. If you're that convinced about the sincerity of my feelings, how come you rolled me over the coals the way that you did? Because there was always that possibility that I could have had to have defended myself and wound up with another charge. There was always that possibility that I could have got in to the prison system and wound up either getting the heck beat out of me or wound up getting raped or wound up being killed. They put you in a very, very vulnerable position. They put you in there in the lion's den, hoping that one of the lions will take care of you. That way, they ain't got to do it. They ain't got to do it for you. They had no idea that God was going to protect me through every event, regardless whether it was the ordeal that happened with me in, in uh, 83, in Bolivar, pertaining to my father, my biological father, they had no idea that God was going to protect me the way that he protected me in 80 and 8, pertaining to Homeland Security. 
they had no idea that God was going to protect me the way that he did in 91, the way that he did in other occurrences, as well as this one here too as well. Once more, this is my way of getting my story out to the general public. And I'm going to let the general public be the judge of what has occurred here. Because it's pretty damn obvious being 20 something trillion dollars in debt. All our jails is full. Crime is escalating. People are shooting cops. Children are being molested and, 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 and raped. The state of Tennessee didn't even know how to even acknowledge child endangerment up until a few years ago and that was the very purpose the reason why that I told them to legalize marijuana to bro prohibition it so that it would not get in the hands of the children and now we've got children out here at the ages of five six seven and eight that is either hooked on heroin meth crystal meth marijuana and all other types of substances uh, abuses now you tell me Who's pulling whose string? Who's blowing smoke up whose rear end? Once more, we're dealing with a group of people that as far as I'm concerned is just as insane as the Pharaohs, beginning with the Reagans and the Bushes that created this de uh, dereliction of duty. They didn't do what they should have done. Just like up here in Weekly County with, with Tommy Moore. If Tommy Moore would have done the right thing with David the first time that David went in front of Tommy Moore after somebody, after three individuals, the Ridgeways and the Sheffields, took him down on his own property and put a gun to his head. If, if Tommy would have done the right thing, we wouldn't have had no problem in going in front of Tommy and letting him hear this last case with the, with the individual that was across the road. Uh, pertaining to me stalking, knowing good and well that I wasn't stalking her. All I was doing was trying to, to uh, lead her to the Lord because of the environment that the children was having to be exposed to. Boy, oh boy. This is getting sicker and sicker every day. As Mr. Wendelthorpe suggested, the expression of the sincerity of your feelings as you suggested a while ago and maybe, maybe some of it falls back on you. Yes. Sir. The, the communication of the sincerity of your feelings may have given the wrong impression of your motives. And that is what we are trying to address today. And and if you decide if you decide to leave the United States, of course that is that is your that is your decision to make. Yes. I think there's a lot of people right now, including football players, NFL football players, that are so ashamed of how things has been handled in the past 25 years. They're like me. Rather than scar and mar the good old USA as far as old glory, they'd rather just get on an airplane and be dropped off somewhere like maybe take me to New Zealand, Ireland, Greenland. Take me somewhere where I'm not infested with so much insanity to the point that it's obvious. Whenever you have a current president by the name of Obama that kissed the hand and the ring of the Saudi princess. It's pretty obvious where this country was heading until we got a good leader by the name of Donald Trump in our White House. And the people sat back and admired it, allowed it. It was getting to the point that we couldn't even put out a lascivity scene out into our yards. That we was going to have to take a chance on being arrested for putting Virgin Mary and the three kings and, and Joseph and, and Mary and Jesus out in our yard on Christmas Day. Oh, you can't say Merry Christmas. you got to say Happy Holidays. 
we was being inundated by this demonic spirit that has now plagued our land, plagued our children, plagued our political affairs, plagued our churches, even plagued our military institutions. But I would suggest to you that had it not been for the desire of Mr. Sparks and, uh, and Ms. Teelhorn when she was here and even the court uh, to deal with you fairly. Fairly? There had been an avoidance of a possible felony charge against you, which would complicate your life even further and would hurt your feelings even further. Uh, and the fact that, that you're going to be put on probation that's unsupervised, that means you're not going to have to file monthly reports, uh, you're not going to have to do anything as far as your supervision is concerned. This is on a federal level. I come back to the state of Tennessee, get charged with an illegitimate charge. The way that the proceedings was, was totally inappropriate, unprofessional, and they was dead set that they wanted to be sure and put me on supervised probation. I've never been put on supervised probation in my entire life. And to think that a wretched, ranked, stinking whore across the road that I was trying to take care of her children because she was either a meth maker or an ex -meth, meth maker or she come from a mother of a meth maker or something because I know her boyfriend over there had to been on drugs by kicking doors off and jumping up and down on cars and to think, to think that David and I was trying to take care of these children and all this backfired the way that it did. I, I really think that God went ahead and allowed David to leave to get out of here because I think David would not have been able to have handled this. What has occurred in the past year and a half in my life pertaining to the judicial system here in Weekly County, I really think David, it would have pushed David off to the edge to the point that David would have probably loaded up a daggum gun and either went up there and killed all the Sheffield family or possibly killed the Sheffield family and killed Donald Ridgeway and Gil Ridgeway and then put a gun to his mouth and blowed his own brains out. It was reaching that point with David to the point that whenever he would leave work, I would let him know about the activities that had been going on out here that was frequent, frequent, almost every day. And I would let David know, David, they're on a row again. You may want to get out your pistol and just lay it there on your on casually on your on your console or on your uh, driver's seat that way whenever you're coming through those deep dark bottoms in between kitten and hop in you ain't got to worry about getting hijacked or somebody uh, uh, road raging you towards trying to take your life and trust me David got that gun out David put that clip in that gun and David was ready for the unexpected David had to live that way David had to live that way on a day-to-day -day occurrence. Plus, he was trying to maintain his own stability. Plus, he was working 10 hours a day, six days a week. You tell me that wasn't stressful? Not knowing from one day to another whether or not somebody was going to come by here and do a drive-by? Or whether or not you was going to get hijacked going down the road? at two or three o'clock in the morning, coming home because everybody and their brother knew his schedule around here. But yet and all, the judicial system up here in Wakeley County fed into all this because that's what the people wanted. The people wanted you to be put away. The people wanted you be, to be isolated, out of sight, out of mind. That way he's no longer a threat to us. That way he won't be able to tell his story. That way he won't be able to pursue his endeavors that he feels like that his God has bestowed up into his life. That way the mission would be a total failure. 
if he's not going to abort, if we can't get him to be a deserter, we'll have to force this upon the Juby towards illegitimately putting him away. Similar to what went on right here. Right here up in Kentucky. And this was the event that happened in 2010. The other event that happened was in 2012, leading up into 2013. I've got paperwork. I've got validation. I've got all kinds of proof pertaining to what has occurred here. And if I can't get vindication one way out of society, I'll do it this way by bringing it to the eyes of the people and letting the people become the jury of what is right and what is wrong. And this includes the Martin PD that apprehended me in 205 simply because I used a word to try to express myself and they took that word and blowed it out of proportion. Once more, what's the pattern here? We're going to try to make this individual out to be a mean, cruel monster. That's the pattern. To be allowed to go on and live your life wherever and however you wish. The only thing that we are going to do is, is, is to, I intend to impose a period of pro, uh, uh, conditional probation that you not return to Western Kentucky where all of this happened. And I don't think you want to. And that you not return to the land between the lakes, either on the Kentucky or Tennessee side of the border. And that way, uh, that way you'll avoid any misunderstanding. I mean, the Forest Service officers, uh, for reasons that I think are partially justified, uh, just think that you better go somewhere else. Because everybody's feelings have been hurt. And, and I, I'm sure that the Forest Service officer, one of which is here today, has uh, been intimidated or at least has felt like that uh, the performance of their duties has... The, the, the uh, police officer or the sergeant, Dwayne Camry, badge number 1414, he was so cowardly, he wasn't even there that day. You would have thought that I had to write to look at my peers or to look at the people that is trying to put me away. He sends somebody else. They know what they done up there in Aurora, Kentucky or outside of Aurora, Kentucky going there of the by Golden Pond. They know what they done was wrong. And they tried to cover it up by saying that I was stalking Dwayne Camry and, and uh, Lisa Hawkins and Gary Hawkins to the extent of bringing out all this stuff which was nothing more than lies upon top of lies upon top of more lies. And to think that I spent not only time in Paducah, Kentucky, but I spent another almost nine months up in Christian County pertaining to a Judge Woodall that wanted to stick the screws to me to the point of sending me to LaGrange, Kentucky and putting me on medication that causes breast enhancement and obesity pertaining to Risperdal. These people was trying to ruin my life! Just like the authorities here in Weekly County beginning with Tommy Moore. The law presumes that you're not guilty. Yes, sir. All right. And you understand that because of that presumption, you do have the right to have a trial on this charge of interfering with the Forest Service officer. You understand that? Yes, sir. You understand if there would be a trial, the government would bear the burden of proof to prove you're guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes, sir. Do you understand if you enter a plea of guilty today under 36 CFR 261.3, there will be no trial and no appeal of your conviction? You, can, you won't get your trial if you plead guilty. And you can't appeal your conviction if you plead guilty. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Can you assure me that your decision to enter a plea today is voluntary? 
I can assure you that, that my plea is, is volunteer, but I can also assure you this, that I have kept up with every documentation since 1983 pertaining to my life. And I will keep up because I will, I will set this to the side for part of my testimony. And eventually, one day, the truth pertaining to what happened, how it happened, when it happened, will probably be exposed to the public. Okay. Now, he agreed to it, right there. Okay. This, and and I, I'm sure I know the answer, but I want you to acknowledge, is there anything going on in your life right now? Or are you under the influence of any medications or anything that would interfere with your ability to give me an intelligent plea of guilt? No, sir. Okay. Right. Is that what you want to do? Yes, sir. All right. Counsel, give me a factual basis. Sir. I can take a stab at it. Scott? Uh, when, when Your Honor, I, I believe the, uh, the evidence in this case for this matter to go to trial would show that over the period of time... Uh, well, let's, let's say specifically January the 25th, 2010. Over this period of time, uh, the uh, defendant, uh, both in person and through uh, communications by telephone, leaving messages, that sort of thing, uh, made statements uh, to uh, officials of LDL, Land Between the Lakes National Park, which could reasonably have been interpreted by them as uh, intimidating or threatening. And although he had no intention uh, to intimidate or threaten anyone, uh, we acknowledge that uh, the recipient of these could reasonably have... I'm not going to use the word threatening. Let's say intimidating or interference. Interference uh, with uh, the, their operations, although it was never intended to be that, we stipulate that it certainly could have been interpreted that way by the recipient. And were this matter to go to trial, I believe there would be a factual basis uh, to support a conviction. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, at or around January the 25th of 2010, did you communicate in any manner with uh, officers of the National Forest Service which would tend to intimidate or interfere with their ability to perform their official duties? And uh, those uh, Forest Service officers were working or assigned to the land between the lakes area in the Western District of Kentucky. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Is that a factual basis? I believe you do, Judge. All right. Now, um, right now I am contemplating a condition of probation that be not re-enter the Western District of Kentucky without permission. Yes, sir. To include but not be limited to the land between the lakes, both in Kentucky and Tennessee. Yes, sir. They do not have to file any monthly reports. Anything else? You don't have to mention something about communications. communications. Probation right now. Oh. Other than monthly reports, is there something else that you mentioned to me? Uh, the testing. Okay. I can do testing. And uh, uh, mandatory drug testing is why it's, it's unsupervised anyway. And what else, Mr. Winkler? You already had mentioned earlier about any communications or okay. contacts. The, the other thing is that you will not communicate either directly or indirectly with any member of the National Forest Service or any employees of the land between the lakes. And by communication, I mean any written communications by letter, by email, any electronic information, uh, uh, communication such as telephone, telegraph, and certainly no personal uh, communications um, in person. Okay? Yes, sir. Does, does this stipulation refer to only the Forest Department? Yes. Without LBL? National Forest Service and the employees of the land between the lakes. Of the land between the lakes. Yes. So he's the, the main office down in the land. I can contact him and I can talk to him about all this. Well, if, be careful. If, if they'll talk to you now. Hey, and I know where the headquarters is in Washington. Okay. Yeah. You're, 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 you're going to do what you want to do. I understand it. I would tell you, I would suggest it's not to. I understand. Because. Why, sure. If, if you do, then you might be facing a like or similar charge in another form, either in the... Try to put a fear factor on him, on myself. 
And the reason why that they didn't want me to disclose it any deeper with other headquarters forest rangers is because they would have looked at this towards how illegitimate that it was that it was them that was violating me not me violating them you can't charge somebody a charge for threatening your life if you tell them that if you continue on doing what you're doing that God's going to get you if I told them that I was going to get them, then they could, they could validate it. But to sit there and tell somebody, hey, vengeance is the Lord, saith thy God, and if you continue on doing what you're doing, I'm warning you right now that God's going to get you. That's not a validated threat coming from that person. If they have interpreted it as a threat coming from that person they're mixed up they're confused they're deranged the district of georgia where the georgia headquarters are or dc or whatever and uh, i would you're going to do what you want to do i would i would advise you not to and just let this let this feud or whatever it is the forest service die down so if you wanted to complain to your congressman or the senator or something like that, that certainly wouldn't affect your ability to communicate with your representative. But and, and, and the only thing that the justice is going to show is the land between the lakes, uh, the Forest Service, Cadre, are the employees of the land between the lakes, yes, in Kentucky and Tennessee. And I'm, and I'm really, see, I could make these conditions a lot more restrictive on you if I thought I had to. But I think... I, from everything I've read in the psychological report, you're going to do the right thing, I believe. If I didn't think you were going to do the right thing, this wouldn't be happening this way. But the fact of the matter is, this charge has been made, this charge has And i had done the right thing. I didn't call them. I didn't contact them. I didn't drive in the state of Kentucky. I left them the you-know-what alone. But 13 minutes after my probation period was over with, is whenever I recontacted the law enforcement agency there in LBL and I let them know, guess what? Everything that has occurred out here has been documented and it will be handed over to the general public and hung up the phone. There was no threats. There was no type of... of uh, Inferioration. I was just telling them the truth and was even in an apologetic form. After my occurrences got dropped over in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, pertaining to Mr. Barnes, I mean Lieutenant uh, Burns, that's whenever I made the second telephone call while working in Oklahoma or outside of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma for a body shop called Collision Clinic. While putting on a door skin on a 150 Ford, having Bondo dust on me from head to toe, I was arrested for stalking, two accounts of stalking because of two telephone calls and they transported me from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma back to Kentucky and ordered for me to go through another evaluation. In other words, they wasn't satisfied in this evaluation. They want, a, they want another evaluation even though I didn't. They couldn't charge me for violation of probation because I went through my probation spot free. But because I had pissed them off they decided that they was going to make my life more miserable than what I could make theirs. They have brought this misery upon to their own selves. This embarrassment towards making a mockery out of the law, they have brought this upon to their own selves here in America. I haven't, I haven't done this. They've done it to themselves. All I've done was help bring transparency and how that they've done it, just like our chief and commander continues to keep doing. 
pertaining to the investigation that was illegitimate. That if the truth be known, it was the it was the Clintons, it was Hillary Clinton that had cahoots with the Russian government, not our chief and commander. I have never seen things so disruptible and so upside down. And whenever they talk about a constitution crisis, we really are at that point of it being a constitution crisis because of stuff just like this. Let's finish up on this, uh, on this court proceedings that happened up in Paducah, Kentucky, and hopefully you can Make your own decisions. Make your own judgment call. He disposed of. And I hope you understand, and Mr. Wimblestrop understands, that this matter is being disposed of in the least restrictive way towards you as it possibly could be. As it possibly could be. I understand, Your Honor, but at the same time, I want you to recognize for the courts that I've been out there five months out of my life. I know that in regards to this. I know that. And, and, and the reason you did is explained by Mr. Wimblestrop on the record was to avoid uh, maybe up to five years if you were convicted of a felony. I disagree. I think it carries up to five years. As long as there's no major actual injury. It wasn't to avoid. It was to stop. Stop my mission. Because they originally wanted to charge me with premeditated murder. Remember? Remember the federal courts? Remember Mr. Scott Wildersworth up in Lexington, Kentucky? Remember the federal system up in Kentucky? That's what you wanted to do. You wanted to stop the mission. You wanted to stop God from manifesting his own prophecies of what is going to occur to not only the spiritual antichrist but the physical one too as well but yet now you call yourselves law and order the law of what the law of the demonic because as far as I'm concerned you're no longer the law of the righteous. You're the law of the unrighteous. And you wonder how come you've been plagued with all these divorces and all these illegitimate pregnancies and all your jails is full and your trillions of dollars in debt and you got problems on every bay. You wonder, you wonder, you wonder. And again, I, I want to... You want to get up there and what? I don't think it, commend is the right word. I don't think I need to commend you for the way you comported yourself. But I want to recognize it. I want to recognize that you comported yourself as a gentleman up there. Uh, you comported yourself with the doctors up there in a gentlemanly way. And as long as you, if you deal with the Forest Service in, in Atlanta or Washington or wherever, if you... If you deal with them in the same way that you dealt with the doctors in Chicago, there shouldn't be any issue. It's just when it's just when uh, the, the doctor, uh, Mr. Wendelsdorf, pointed out the language that um, you simply did not interpret the actions to be threatening, but instead uh, justified given the importance of your message, and uh, you. Maybe it was misinterpreted by the people that you were communicating with. That's what you need to avoid. No, nah, it wasn't you misinterpreted. Need to avoid saying something that it wasn't misinterpreted. Construed as a threat or intimidation nah. or trying to get them to change what they're doing uh, to interfere. With we their know what they're doing. Their and that's that's the deal. We know what the court systems is up to. Because you understood it with the doctors. I appreciate that. And uh, you can do what you want to do. Uh, as long as you don't violate the conditions of probation. And it's also the standard conditions of probation judge not commit any other offense. Okay. So those sorts of things. You'll not be, you'll not be allowed to commit any other offense in violation of federal state law uh, while on probation. If you do, I'm likely to find out about it. And if I do, then you, I can impose a period of imprisonment on you 
that was available to me today that I did impose up to six months in jail. Furthermore, if you commit an offense and are found guilty of an offense while on this two-year period of probation, the United States may elect to seek a further period of imprisonment as a result of this other offense. Well, let's, let's, say, let's, say, let's, say, let's say, for instance, you're on probation for two years. Over in the first three chapters of Revelations, it says, Behold, Satan will throw you into prison. Be thou faithful unto death. He that shall overcometh shall be given a crown of life. I never would have thought that our judicial systems here in America has been handed over to Satan to the point that now they actually punish people for doing good and reward people for doing bad. Well, isn't that what Christ said? That birds of a feather flock together? That the blind lead the blind? That sinners love sinners? Follow what I'm saying? In other words, they would have thought more of me if I would have been a murderer, a rapist. They would have thought more of me if I was a drug dealer or ex-drug dealer. They would have thought more of me if I would have been a pedophile or any of the above. But because I wasn't, now the shame of hypocrisy falls upon to the judicial systems that has tried to ruin the messenger simply because they did not like the message. What tough kitty and the milk still good because the pharaohs didn't like that message neither, coming from God through the mouth of, yes, Moses. They didn't like the message coming from the messenger pertaining to Noah whenever he preached his message neither. And there's been event after event after event. There's a pattern. Event after event after event of how that they run the prophets from village to village, how they prosecuted them and how they executed them and how they basically went after them towards trying to pronounce them as them being bad or evil. And the very people that was bad and evil was the very people that was promoting this message the same as the holy men, the pharaohs, the same as the priest that began their hypocrisy message to the subjecting courts the day that they decided to crucify Jesus and say, away with him, away with him, for this man committed the blasphemy. No. Jesus Christ was not fraudulent. He did not commit blasphemy. It was the people that was com convicting him and falsely accusing him that was committing blasphemy. Blasphemy. And when you're in, you're down in Tennessee or Texas or somewhere, and you shoplift. You can say you steal something. If you get convicted of that offense, that's going to mean the end of this probation, and you'll come back here and I'll sentence you uh, accordingly. I'll revoke your probation and sentence you accordingly if you're convicted of a theft, say, down in Tennessee. Yes, sir. Uh, the way that I understand it, they've got about another 30 days. This, this will be a four term sentence to begin with, for The way that I understand it. No, because I'm not imposing a period of imprisonment this time. There's still six months on the shelf. So the time that has been served is not time to be recognized by the court, sir? No, no because I'm placing you on probation 
rather than sentencing you to a period of confinement. That's why. Well, the counsel and I have discussed it. That there would be a, a, a question as to um, credit. Uh, we're, we're a new sentence being imposed, but the credit is this. Right. Put you back in jail. Well, well, let's make sure you understand. Here, here's, here's, okay. here's, the here's the difference. Here's the difference. I understand, but it also wants you to understand that just by committing another, and I'm not talking about a traffic ticket, okay? Uh, we're talking about a, a crime of, of substance. A DUI would count, for example, a uh, theft crime, certainly any kind of violent crime or drug crime. So in, in, in addition to being punished for that new crime, he could bring you back at the very least give you additional time on this case. But as he's pointed out, the government could also give you time for violating the conditions of probation. Yes, but as I think everybody agrees. Let me say something. Here, here's what you're talking about. When we, we were here before, I know there was some talk to you that you would be given credit for the time you broke the hospital. That's Absolutely. what you're talking about. Right, now, here's the deal. At that time, you were charged with a Class A misdemeanor. A Class A misdemeanor could uh, result in you going to jail for up to one year. Okay. If you'd been prosecuted as a Class A misdemeanor, you'd get you'd get credit for about five months that you've been you've been in custody of the hospital. That would leave seven months on the shelf, <coughs> seven months that you hadn't served. If you've been charged with a Class A misdemeanor and you've been put on probation and you violated, I would have seven months available to me rather than the six. I got you. Okay. So what has happened since that discussion? is that the United States has agreed with the uh, uh, defense attorney that we drop this down to a Class B misdemeanor, which only carries the possibility of six months in jail, and as opposed to a $100,000 fine, a fine of $5,000. So you've been, had a further reduction in the nature of your charge since there was talk of that you would get credit for the time that you were in the hospital which would have left seven months on the shelf and from the total of 12. I got you. So you, you follow the difference? Yes. Okay. This is this is all purely academic talk. If, if, you, if, you, if you meet your conditions of probation, if you don't commit any other crimes, then you're going to be way ahead of the game. You're going to be way ahead of the game, and that's up to you. And I think you can do it. Uh, from again, from what I'm told from the psychological part, you can do it if you set your mind. And I did do it. And if you want to communicate with somebody outside the land between the lakes, and if you want to communicate with somebody outside Western Kentucky, you have a way. Because Dr. Dana has told me you have a way of communicating without saying things that are misinterpreted as a threat or intimidation. And that's all. That's all there is to it. And uh, you've got. How old are you? 49. You've got, you've got a long life ahead of you. You can do what you want to do. And all we're trying to do is get this matter resolved so that you can continue with your life with the least restrictions possible. And whether there's any further restrictions after today is dependent upon you. Not upon me, not upon Mr. Wendell's or Mr. Spark. It all depends on you. You will never have to see me again. You will never have to be here in, in court of Paducah again. You'll never have to see Mr. Wendelsdorf again unless you bring it on yourself. Okay? Your Honor. Yes, sir. If, if everything was turned around and he was being, uh -huh. would, you, would you believe that I was getting a fair shake? Yes, sir. I certainly would because it's like Mr. Wendel, Mr. Wendelsdorf told you, they could have. The United States could have insisted on charging you with a felony, threatening the Forest Service officer. It could have charged you with a Class A, which would carry up to $100,000 in one year yes. under this one All right, stop right there. He just told off on himself. Because up until now, we've been talking about a misdemeanor either a class A misdemeanor or a class B misdemeanor. Okay? Now, he just got through saying, we could have charged you with a felony. Where did that come from? That come from the conversation that they approached me with in the beginning towards premeditated murder. 
of going after Satan, a darkly complected individual with Arabic descent. They are protecting this individual over in Saudi Arabia. And they know it. Like I said, he just validated. He just admitted that he could have charged me with a felony. Even though it was a lightweight felony, a Class E felony, where did that come from? If you'll take notice, in the next two minutes, somebody edited what was actually said that day in court. And they thought that what material that they had released was not going to validate their wrongs in what they actually tried to pull the wool over up in Paducah, Kentucky. There's a split where they edited it because the conversation was in depth about the darkly complected man, but they took it out. Please listen. That you first charged up against him, and it's been dropped down to a class B. There's been no fine. There could have been a fine of up to five thousand dollars. I understand. You've already acknowledged the factual basis. I understand. All that. You could have. Um, you could have gone to jail for six months, which would have left another month on the table. But you're going to walk today. Okay. And, I, and I, I don't see, like I said before, I don't know how you could have been fair. I'm going to bring one other thing All right. to your attention. Okay. And I mean this very, very respectfully. Okay. The 43rd President of the United States went to war with people in Iraq because he was going to war to vindicate the wrong that was being committed on those people pertaining to the acts of evil. We was going to war to liberate those people over there, sir. To liberate those people from the acts of evil. Am I trying to read evil, per se, with my belief? Absolutely. I would like to see all rapes, murders, any type of wrong things pertaining to either God's law or man's law. I would like to see utopia and peace upon the earth. And if there's something wrong with that, then I, I must... I must be interpreting something. All right. I don't see anything wrong. It's just like I said earlier, Mr. Jackson. I believe you. I believe in the sincerity of your beliefs. And all I'm saying is that I want you to pursue that utopia as best you can. And we all, in our own way, are trying to pursue justice and utopia as best we can. I don't think anybody here in this courtroom that would stand for forgiving a crime that's committed, either rape or murder or, or I hope that they would. Yeah. And, and, and I, I'm saying we all have a common belief. And, and all I'm saying is that I agree in your sincerity. And I believe in your sincerity. I appreciate it. And, and I'm not going to discuss with you my, my personal thoughts about the invasion of Iraq. I'm not going to discuss with you my personal thoughts about Afghanistan because that's all beside the point. I understand. You can, after your contact with me, you can assume whether I'm sincere or not. I've told you that I believe you're sincere. Yes. And, I, and the only difference is, is how you communicate to people those feelings of utopia. As long as people aren't intimidated or as long as people aren't frightened of what you say, then you're going to be fine, and, and you can seek your utopia and your crime-free world in any way that you can. And I, I regret the fact that as many people as there are in the United States, all of us, all of us that believe in the same qualities that you do, we have a relatively small circle of people that we can, we can, uh, Word I want, rely upon. No, not rely upon, but we can we can pass along our our, our feelings to them. Yes. Influence influence is the word I want. Yes. So we can we can all do the same thing in our own little 
sphere of influence. Yes. And, and and I believe I believe that from what the doctors say, I believe that you have sincerity. Yes. But just understand it's the way you communicate what they called us to be here today. I understand. All right. Uh, are there any other? Is there anything else from Mr. Sparks? No, I think that David and I listened to this several different times. And we felt like that somewhere after that he had told about the federal charge that could have been placed on to my life, that that's where the tape began and ended pertaining to editing. I can't say for sure because, you know, this was, this was in 2010. This is now 2018. There's been a period of about eight years that has passed here, so <clears throat> sometimes memory lapses does happen. Um, but I'm pretty sure that there was a discussion about a darkly complected individual in this court. In this court. Because that's where the original and was the intent of the original charge began. And they plea bargained with me and the reason why they play bargain with me, they probably felt like that if I continue on this story with a bunch of psychoanalyzing doctors, regardless whether it was in whatever mental health facility, that they would have listened to my story and would have deemed me crazy, and then they would have got a hot shot judge to have signed off on the paperwork, and the next thing you know, instead of me just being evaluated, I would have went through some long, lengthy process of being committed to a treatment center for two, three, four, five years. And like I said, if you're not crazy, whenever you go into most of these places, by the time they get through thorazining you out and giving you all this mind alterating medication, if you're not crazy when you go in, You'll be crazy when you come out. And usually, the people that does come out, if they come out, they're usually slobbering all over their shoes. They don't know the difference between hardly daylight and dark. Most of them has difficulty even wiping their own tails because you can literally destroy an individual's life chemically. And that's where they wanted to go with me and it just so happens that God was on my side the paperwork never did wind up in MCC downtown Chicago Dr. Dana didn't have nothing to go by other than bare facts and he basically evaluated me off of his instruments that he had as far as doing an assessment um, examining me and his prognosis was a good one but like I said, the people up in land between the lakes, because I made a telephone call, a simple telephone call, expressing to them that this was going to go public, it just irritated them to no end. And then, after 90 days, calling another individual that was associated with the same group of people that was trying to do me in, that's whenever the long arm of the law, because they're associated with the federal grounds up there in Land Between the Lakes, they reached out and they pursued going all the way out to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, to grab me up and bring me back to Katie's, Kentucky, of standing in front of a Judge Woodall being represented this time by a Miss Flemings, which her husband is a juvenile judge in Christian County up in Hopkinsville. And since then, she has quit her position towards being a public defender because she identified that what had went on was totally bogus, illegal, and wrong. 
and it reached the point of double jeopardy. In other words, they was trying me twice. They wasn't satisfied in their first assessment towards dragging me through the mud up in Chicago. They wanted to do it twice, actually three times. The first time was in Four Rivers Behavior Center up in Mayfield, Kentucky. Then the second time was in Chicago, and of course the third time was actually in LaGrange, Kentucky. These people should be charged with trying to destroy a human being's life. These people should be looked upon and shamed and made a mockery out of that works for LBL and the Department of Land Between the Lakes up in Kentucky. Not only these people, but the people in, in Oklahoma that made the cover-up pertaining to the um, the, the uh, incident that happened in 1995 as far as covering up to the public that there was detonators in the bottom part of the basement. Those people should be looked upon, the investigators and the authorities in that should be looked upon as being a mockery, a mockery towards what that they done and what that they didn't do towards transparency out to the general public. And would it have made the investigation a bit more complex? Probably. Probably. My, in, my uh, uh, theory of what actually happened was that within about the 35th to the 40th day of the 51 day standoff, everybody was handling that uh, proceedings up in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in the federal building up there because of, uh, of it being such of a high uh, intensity case. Um, my theory is that Janet Reno, working through Bill Clinton, once more, were, were framing up onto the Clintons, wound up putting an order out of somebody grabbing up about two to four boxes of dynamite that was going to be used upon to the Davidians. It just so happens the day that the raid happened in Waco, Whenever the tank was driving holes off into the building, they had a sharpshooter that had ruptured a propane tank on the grounds. And as the propane was being spewed out into the yard, the tank was driving holes into the building. The building was depressurizing itself, which was drawing in all the oxygen that it could, including the propane. that was out in the yard because propane hovers on the ground. It's not like natural gas. Natural gas will go up into the atmosphere. And of course, them women that was watching them children in Waco had to have some sort of lighting because all the electricity had been turned off for days and days and days. They either had candles or coal oil lamps or some sort of flames to be able to see, to be able to take care of them children. And of course, whenever all that propane got to the open flame, Com combustible, you see what happened. It turned into a fireball. It basically barbecued those people. The, the United States government, as far as I am concerned, killed those people that day. Even though they didn't use what they wanted to use, which was about two to four boxes of dynamite. And tell me about, tell me about uh, the laws of gravity. Tell me about karma tell me about what goes around comes back around the very people that had planned that out failed to take that dynamite out of that basement and just so happens whenever that rider truck went off boom it registered one thing on the Richter scale and then a second later there was a second explosion that went way off the charts it went like four point something on the Richter scale that was all that dynamite that was stored up underneath that basement that had done already turned into nitrous. Nitroglycerin. Because dynamite, after it's stored for a certain period of time under the wrong conditions, will go to sweating, and that sweat that comes out of that wax, that is nitroglycerin. To the point that you could walk into a home and shut the door too hard 
that would activate it. Some idiot didn't have enough sense to drag it out of the basement. But the intent was it was going to be used on ending the 51-day standoff. Now, can I prove that? No. I cannot prove that coming from the Clinton administration. But what I can prove is that there was a government cover-up and that there had to have been explosives stored in the lower part of that basement which should not have been stored there. If they're going to store something like that, they need to store it up there at the National Guard Armory in a, in a container that, that is made for nothing but stuff like that. That way it can be in a controlled environment and the people that, that's involved in it will, will, uh, will know uh, how to store it and that way it's not as lethal as it would be just sitting in, in a basement with probably a sheet or something covered over it. This is the ending of this procedure. Conditions of probation have been recited. Uh, and I have nothing further to add to It's my Thank understanding you for your time. The judge that uh, uh, Mr. Jackson's belongings will be returned to him today that he can be released here from the courthouse. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Jackson, best of luck to you. And, uh, and, and I. The best of luck to you, and I hope everything works out for you. And, and I hope that the time that we've spent here today uh, maybe kind of clear the air. Clear the air a little bit. And, uh, Boy, you didn't know it, though. How we feel, I hope. And I know how you feel. And uh, I wish the best of luck to you. Anything else in the United States? No, you're not. Thank you. No, no, sir. Thank you, Josh. We're adjourned. Thank you. You see, whenever a federal judge like that is talking, he's talking in reference to the United States government. He's representing his position of the United States government. And the fact of the matter is, they still owed me about 700 and something dollars that I had on my books, and I had no earthly ideal that I guess every federal courthouse has a machine down in the lower part of it that within a matter of minutes because they owed me that seven hundred something dollars brought me up a check with the Statue of Liberty on it I don't know if people can remember the old Social Security checks back years ago that the government used to send out before they started sending out electronical money towards it being electronically, di digitally uh, put into people's accounts. But within a matter of minutes, they had me a check that looked like that it come from Washington, D.C., the same type of paper, the same type of ink, the same design, the same everything. And I'm thinking to myself whenever I see this check, well, my God, just at any given wimp, if they decide that they need some money, all they got to do is go down there and print it up and have somebody take it to the bank and cash it. This is where we are with the people that's in charge of our lives. This is where we are with a nation that has gone off of it has gone off of its original path that has decided to take another path, a path that our ancestors didn't intend for them to take, and this is the results of it, towards picking and trying to destroy the innocent. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that if these occurrences that has taken place in my life going all the way back to 1983 pertaining to what went on in Kenton, Tennessee. If this has gone on in my life, how many other lives out there has it gone on? How many other gifted people just because they didn't have a Joe Olstein congregation
to support them and they was vulnerable. How many other people out there that had gifts and talents that was supposed to have been used for the glory of God and they tried to use them but because they tried to use them the government shut them down or entrapped them or hurt them in some sort of way because of their evil demonic system now that they have set in motion this monster this beast that is out of control is not only destroying people's lives like my own as far as the Christian society but now it's starting to wreak habit upon to their own lives their own children their own grandchildren, their own nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles are now being devoured. They have brought this upon to themselves pertaining to what went on in 1988 whenever nine tapes went to the White House and they know without a shadow of a doubt that it was the Lord thy God that went with Ronald Reagan towards convincing the superpowers that the world was not going to be destroyed by nuclear by nuclear activity but it was going to be destroyed the way that God intended for it to be destroyed they told everybody else that but did they tell us that no they took a dive just the other way towards opening up the gates of hell and bringing in all this sin that is now devouring our land. It is now devouring our churches. It is now devouring our government. It is now devouring our people. I pray every day for these people here not only in the United States but throughout the world because there's not anything any worse to a parent than to watch their children be sick they're sick of a disease and you can't heal them you know there has to be some sort of medication out there that if you could just get a hold of the right antidote that it would heal them but you got to sit and watch them suffer and suffer and suffer to the point that now we've almost exceeded what we did all of last year pertaining to the police homicides and up in Chicago pertaining to so much violence and all over the countryside with the with the major storms and the violence and and the disruption in our government it's really sad because like I said whenever you look at your children and they're sick it hurts it hurts you because you know that they have been exposed to something that they shouldn't have been exposed to regardless whether it was airborne or something they drank or something they smoked or something they took It's one of the saddest moments of history. And the sad thing, now Satan has accomplished by planting these seeds in this particular neighborhood, seeds of division, seeds of hate, seeds of unfaithfulness, seeds of doubt. And because these seeds have grown, not only has it grown in the pillars of society pertaining to the elders, but now it's growing in the children and even the children's children. It's now went down to two different generations right here in Northwest Tennessee that I can bump into people that I've never spoken to or heard of. And I'm talking about way before I started issuing out my messages either on Facebook or YouTube or other social media platforms but I could drive and meet people that know just exactly who I was because they had heard about my message 
and they had studied it, but they was fascinated in it in a negative way and not a positive way because the seeds of division, the seeds of doubt, the seeds of unbelief had done already been planted by my enemy. It's similar to the seeds that's been planted over in the Middle East. How that they look at the Americans towards the Americans being nothing but a bunch of nitwits or a bunch of infidels or a bunch of Satanists. And I can understand if I was them looking at the Americans not all of them but the good people over there and there are good people in the Middle East if I was them looking at us the way that our adventures and the way that our practices has become and the way that we've cut and sliced on each other and the way that our churches has failed and our political affairs has failed and the way that all our our jails is full and our 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 indebtedness and and everything else I would probably be looking and thinking and coming up with the same assessment as they would be towards thinking you know what America is nothing but a cheap trick. America is bogus. America is fraudulent. America is sick. America is a bunch of hypocrites. America is a bunch of infidels. I would probably be just like those people over there by looking at our practices of what that we have done in the past 25, 30 years. Because if you get to looking at all this paranormal activity and Harry Potter and, and uh, witchcraft and warlocks and, and uh, all this other stuff as far as the bloodshed, the gory stuff on TV, we have been invadated, invadated by nothing more than evil. Wickedness aboundeth up onto the land. And who do we have to blame? We know Satan, the Antichrist spirit. But what individuals should be held accountable? The very individuals that tried to bury me. The very individuals that tried to bury the truth in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The very individuals that went at, almost went after me in Atlanta, Georgia, Whenever I basically shut down their uh, their Calvary simply by leaving a cassette tape at the governor's office, Governor Sonny Perdue office, um, the very people that I've lived with, raised up with, reared with, the judicial system right here in Weekly County, in O'Brien County, right here in Northwest Tennessee, that should be the people that should be held accountable. Because rather than operating in the way that our ancestors operated 50, 40, 30 years ago, they're operating now. Their practices now is to the point that we don't want the commandments nowhere around our courthouse. We don't want the Bible up here. We don't want to swear into nothing. Um, it used to be, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Nothing but the truth? I don't even know that that even occurs in the majority of the courthouses of the day. Do you swear to tell the truth? The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So help you God. See, they only want bits and pieces of the truth. And the bits and pieces of the truth that they want is the pieces that benefits them. They only want to protect certain people throughout the counties and the states. The rest of us can go straight to hell. Those who's ever made a mistake, they want to hold our feet to the fire. And those who are standing up for righteousness and godliness, they want to pervert our message and say, no, 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 it's not of God, it's of Satan. They have done this to us, we the people. And I believe it's time for we the people to speak up and to put an end to this type of mockery 
that our ancestors did not intend for us to have to go through. And whenever I say us, once more, I know there has to be a majority of people out there similar to me that feels like that they have been abused and neglected by the system. They have been taken advantage of. There has to be more than just one person that has went through similar scenarios and situations that I have went through. Once more, I want to thank you. God bless you. Good luck to all of us in our endeavors, in our holy endeavors towards wanting to better society and not harm it, not hurt society. Good luck and shalom to the highest of the highest pertaining to Yahweh and his son Yahshua. I pray for the nations. Father God in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for the wind, the founder of the Windmill Ministries missions of being able to present this information to the general public today. It lives here at 291 Thompson Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 3255. Just pray, God, for our leaders, not only here in America, but throughout the world. Pray, God, for the lonely, the sick, the abused, the used. Pray, God, for the elderly. Pray, God, for the children that are being taken advantage of right now. Pray, Lord, for those who are being raped and stolen from and taken from. Pray, O oh merciful God, that you, Lord, to have mercy upon us all and that you will lead us, O oh God, not into temptation, but that you will deliver us from this evil. We just ask all these things in your Holy Son's name because we know that it's only by Him and in Him and with Him that's going to get us out of this darkness back into the light where you originally wanted us to go back years ago. We pray, Lord, for a great revival that will sweep the land, not only here in America, but throughout the, throughout the world, for the nations, the healing of the nations. And we just pray, Lord, that you, God, will forgive us of our sins, even as we forgive those who trespass against us. For thus saith the Lord, thy God, the Lord of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And amen. And amen. Thanks again for listening. Good luck to all of us. Shalom.